Welcome back team. It is your biggest fan, the real Casadero, and in this session, I'm going to tell you whether or not a boot camp is worth it, team. Let's get to it. All right, team. So, a member of the Code 365 Startup Lab and I assume a subscriber to the channel Message me on Twitter says, hey, I appreciate you making the vid. I went ahead and got the $99 course from your site. What they're talking about is a Code 365 Startup Lab. And I will be honest, absolutely honest. The Code 365 Startup Lab is a place where I put, there's like six or seven free courses on HTML and all kinds of stuff. So if we go in here and we go into terminal, I'm just going to show you this to give you guys a little bit of context. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type uh, get dash sites. And this is a custom script that I wrote in PowerShell. And all it does is it pulls up my social media site. It pulls up my website when I run the command get sites. So over here at the Code365 Startup Lab, this is the actual Code365 Startup Lab membership plan. That's either 99 bucks or $20 a year I mean $20 a month it's either $99 for lifetime access right now or uh, 20 bucks a month and I'm gonna be raised the, the the price is gonna go up but to be to be honest right a lot of the content that I want to put in here isn't here yet I'm still working on HTML uh, so for the first part getting to the money as fast as possible this talks about client acquisition uh, and then you've got setting up your development environment. That's everything you need to install to get started. Then you've got HTML beyond the primer. This is where we get into like the core of HTML. We cover some SEO stuff in here um, and a few of the tags, the basic structure of HTML. And then we get into like the building blocks. And that's where we're going over like the inline, inline, inline elements and block level elements. And then after, the, so when I'm done with HTML, after I get through all of the elements, um, and then the, 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 there's some other things to HTML, like the ability to add media files. So you add media, you can add video and audio and code these things up. So once we get past HTML, then I'm going to go into CSS. We're going to cover CSS, uh, layout, styling, the box model, uh, flex box, and grids. And then we're going to go into JavaScript and we're going to cover JavaScript, all of the stuff you need to know in JavaScript. I think JavaScript is going to be the longest course, but it's also going to be the most in-depth. And all this stuff is designed to make it super easy, super simple for people who don't know how to code, who've never put their hands on a computer before to come and then sit down and then learn all this stuff and by the end, be able to build a website and not even by the end, by the time you get to be on the prime where you will know how to build a web page and also I'm going to be adding tutorial courses right now I have uh, how to build a supreme website that's going to be going on here and um, there's another one I think a crash course but anyway team anyway a, a, some tutorials are going to be going on here crash courses are going to be going on here a lot of stuff is going to be going in the code 365 startup lab that is why this person went and signed up and there's other people in the code 365 startup lab as well team but dig so the Code 365 Startup Lab, they, they signed up for the Code 365 Startup Lab. But if we go down and we look a little more, they say, I'm concerned that the boot camp won't be worth the monetary commitment, but I've had trouble doing it on my own this past year. And what they're talking about is going to a boot camp. They say, I start Lambda School October 28th, but I'm still undecided on if that's the way to go and so I ask what exactly is it that you want to accomplish and right down here they say I want to make my business ideal into a progressive web app also I want to secure a full stack developer job as a backup so let's unpack this as the cool kids would say team all right team so when it comes to going to college or going to university or going to a boot camp or to or or take or buying a co online course or doing a tutorial or even buying a book and reading a book. We have to think about the cost, the, the cost. We think about the cost automatically, but most of the time we automatically think about the monetary cost. How much is this thing going to cost? What we don't think about is the time cost. How much time is this going to take? And what we, what we have to do is we have to take these two things. We put them together. How much money is it going to cost? How much time is it going to take to complete this thing? Because we have a set end date when we're in a school or a, a course and sometimes in boot camps they'll say like a week two weeks three weeks however many weeks well well most of the time in boot camps they'll say all this they'll, they'll tell you how long the boot camp is going to be 
where you go into a tutorial, the tutorial will be like, hey, if you do this X amount of hours a day for X amount of days, by the end, you will know X amount of things. Here, the deal, the deal team is everybody's different. Everybody learns different. And so I have, I have three kids. Well, I have, I have five. One's in college, and then I have four little kids. And my youngest one is like two years old, and my oldest, my oldest one is 13. And they're all homeschooled. And they've been homeschooled for like two years now, since, since, since back when I was working at Microsoft. And they learn on their own based on what it is they're trying to achieve. And we all do this. We all do this inherently in our everyday lives. If there's something that we want to figure out, we just go figure it out. We just go, we go learn it. Like when you, when you wanted to bake a cake, were you like, Hey man, like, I wonder if there's a college course on cake baking. Like nobody thinks like that. You're like, Hey, I want to bake a cake before in the olden days. Maybe you subscribe to magazines where you got these magazines and they talked about how to bake cakes. But now you can go out to the internet and you can just say, how do I make this cake? How do I do this thing? And you can find all kinds of stuff. Now, courses come into play because courses, the internet is big. There's like six billion different websites out there. Courses come into play because they take a lot of information and they condense them down. But just because you take the course doesn't mean you're going to know how to bake the cakes. You have to have the desire to bake cakes before you take the course. And you have to understand that at the end of the course, the cakes that you bake are probably not going to be exactly like the cakes in the course. With code, it's a little different. Like you can go take a course on code and if you follow the code exactly, and with baking cakes, if you follow the cakes exactly, except when you get to something that takes some artistic talent like frosting or something like that. But in code, you just copy all the code, you get the exact same product. Now, if you want, the, if you want your product to look better, than what was done in the course, then you have to take what you learned in the course and you have to apply those skills in order to make what it is you're making look better. So if you understand how this was positioned, then you can understand how to position it a different way. So like when it, in the, in the baking cakes example, and my wife bakes a lot of cakes. She loves to bake cakes uh, on her Instagram. I think it's like uh, crystal, crystal Academy or something like that. It, it doesn't matter. But the deal is, is, is when, when, like when we're baking cakes, our first cake isn't going to be, it's not going to look exactly like the cake. But if we build, if we make another cake and we practice that again, then we get a little better and we get a little better. And we, we do this over time. And that's what school does for us because school gives us homework and this, that, and the third. But again, the problem with school is, is that if you don't have why you're going to school if you don't have the end result mapped out like and it doesn't have to be like detailed detailed but you got to know in your head like why am i learning this thing like what am i going to do this thing for so in the case of this person who's going to this boot camp they're thinking about going to this boot camp all right number one is going to cost a lot of money right we know that it's going to cost a lot of money it's going to cost uh, some time at least at least eight weeks i would assume so we're looking at at least eight weeks and we're looking at however much money it costs, you know, a few thousand dollars, maybe, maybe as much as, you know, 10, 20, $30,000. I don't know what they're going to pay for this thing. Now, if they're going to go through this boot camp and like, and you look at the boot camp and you say, what am I going to get from this? Number one, what do I want to get from this boot camp? And then what does this boot camp offer? And are those two things in alignment? And what's the evidence? And now you can go out to the world and you, you can look at other people who've gone to the boot camps, other people who've been to boot camps. You look at videos on boot camps like you're watching this video about whether or not a boot camp is, wor is worth it. And then at some point you have to make a determination. And the determination shouldn't be based on the cost and what everybody else said. The determination should be based on you as an individual, what your definition of success is and what you have what 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 has been your past history because your past history is going to dictate your future performance unless something absolutely changes and most of the time it doesn't this is why we have people who go who who take multiple boot camps who go through multiple coding courses or you get or you get people 
who go to a boot camp, they go through the boot camp, they finish the boot camp, and it doesn't produce the results that they thought it was going to produce. And then they go, ah, oh, well, you know, boot camps are terrible. And they go off and they go back to doing whatever it is they were doing before, and they never use the stuff that they learned from the boot camp. Just like college. People go to college all the time. They spend four years, eight years, ten years learning something, and then they get out of college. They look for a job for a little while. They can't find a job. They need a job at some point. They take the job that comes along, and then they stay in that job for 10, 20 years, and they never use their degree. And the question is, like, why did this happen? How did this happen? How do we get to this point where we spend all this money and we spend all this time, but we're not doing the thing we want to do? And it's because it wasn't the thing we wanted to do in the first place. If we had mapped it all out in the beginning, then we would have took a different path. So, like, take, take me, for instance. I, I left the Army because I had a vision that I didn't want to deploy anymore. I didn't want to deploy, but I didn't go beyond that. I was like, I don't want to deploy. I'm going to get out of the Army. And then I thought a little bit about what am I going to do? What am I interested in? And then I was like, hey, I'm going to be a day trader because it looked good. I'm interested in finance. I read a bunch of books about finance and money. So I'm going to go be a day trader and trade stocks um, on the market. And I got out and I did that for a little while. And it was nerve wracking because I didn't think about the fact that if you're if you're if you're trading stocks, you're going to lose money from time to time. And so every time I would go out and I would buy a bunch of shares, I would just be on edge and then. You know, I couldn't wait to sell. Sometimes I would sell too soon. Sometimes I would sell too late. So I was like, dude, I can't do this. Right. And I was like, hey, I'm into code. It's always something I've been doing. Even when I was doing the stock stuff, I was writing programs to like analyze prices and to generate reports and all kinds of stuff. And so I was like, hey, look, I got the Montgomery GI Bill. I'm going to go to school and I'll learn to code and then I'll go get a job to learn to code. And at the time, it was like, I'm going to go get a job to learn to code because I like code and I want to code. But I never defined what that meant. Like, what does knowing how to code look like? And to be honest, it looks it you don't. there's no difference. Like, you just have more skills, but you don't get to use them if you don't have anything to use them on. So, like, I've been studying web development since 1995, like my first book on web development was this book right here sam's teach yourself html and css in 24 hours and this this book this one book out of all the stuff that i've done right go joining the army having the army send me to school to learn about communications telecommunications computer systems networking security then going to school for software development then working at microsoft as a devops engineer working with powershell and 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 writing scripts and running scripts and building scripts and building servers and then building web pages then leaving leaving that and going to work as as a as a, a web developer and then starting my own company trying to go out and find clients and all this stuff this was the best education Education because this education, when I bought this book, I bought this. I didn't have a lot of money. Uh, I was I was in high school. I had just got my first computer, or I think I was on my third computer now, right? So I I I've saved up the money. I bought a computer, and then I was like, I want to learn HTML because I had seen all these cool websites on the internet. So. I took like my, it was, I think this book cost like five or six bucks back then. Maybe, maybe now, maybe it was 16, $16. It was like between, I think it was about $16, between 16 and 20 bucks. I went to the used bookstore and I didn't know what I was looking for. Like I wasn't looking for like the newest version of anything. I wasn't looking for like the newest language or whatever. Um, and it, it wasn't even C, it wasn't even CSS. It wasn't even, it was just, it was Sam's teach yourself html css didn't even exist back then so anyway and now there's a bunch of other books there's a bunch of them right it's like it, it wasn't even html4 it was just sam's teach yourself html so anyway when i bought this book i had a goal to build this website that looked like hacker city and that was it i just wanted to build a website that looked like hacker city and I bought the book and I read the I read the book. It took me 24 hours to, to go through this entire book from beginning to end. And it was the first ever tutorial book I did. And it was one of two books um, for sure that I went all the way through. It was that book. And then there was a book head first, head first something that I that I and I'm looking. I got books on my shelf. 
it was um I think it was like head first HTML and CSS or head first web web design or something or something like that. We can go if we go like edge, we can look it up. Uh we could go uh we'll go to Amazon. And we'll type ah geez. Control L Amazon dot com and then we'll go down here to the search bar and we'll go it was a uh, head first HTML. Head first HTML and CSS. That's the book that's the book that I finished. And that's the book that like really helped me understand cascading style sheets. But the the, the deal is is I I wanted to finish the book. I wanted to finish this book because I was gonna know CSS at the end and I hadn't understood CSS up until that point. Like I had I learned HTML and then I joined the army and then I did army stuff and I was like kind of messing around with like computers and stuff in between but not like anything major and then at some point like I came back to it in like 2006 2007 and that's when I like really got back into like web design and web pages and stuff like that and, th and at that time I started building stuff like I built like this casino website like I don't have any of this stuff anymore but I just started building stuff and I started taking other people's stuff and like rearranging it um, like I saw this I saw this banner that I liked one time. So I took this banner and I like, I photoshopped out one part of it and I added my own part. And then I used HTML to like put it on top of this affiliate site that I had. And it was just like all kinds of stuff team. But that was, but, but again, that goes back to like the self learning of everything. Like when we want to do something, we just go out and do it. Right. And, and so Again, I get it, right? When we want to when we want to change careers or something, we think it's like this big thing. As soon as we think like get a job, our head becomes filled with all this stuff and we're like, "Hey, we need these credentials and we need all this other." And, and basically what we're what we're seeking is we're seeking proof. We're seeking proof that 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 when when somebody sees us, like when they see our resume, like the the stuff on the resume, the school that we went to, the boot camp, is proof to them that we know how to do that thing so they should hire us the problem is is that it's not enough proof you still have to go do the interview and so people they'll go through the boot camp and they'll get through the interview and they're not confident in the stuff they they learned because they never defined why they were learning it in the first place they went into it thinking i'm just gonna learn to code i just want to learn to code so i can get a job so i can go code but code what like it's 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 like saying I want to work on cars, but what can the car? All wheel drive, two wheel drive, stick shift, manual. What, what engine? I want to work on engines. Like you want to work, but you have to start somewhere. You gotta start on a engine. You just can't start on all the engines. I want to go code. That's you're saying you want to go do this really big thing, which is cool. Like we we should want to do big stuff, but we gotta start somewhere. Like, code for what? I want to build applications. I want to build websites. I want to build whatever. And then it's like, okay, so we got this person here, and they're going, yo, Cass, I want to build single-page applications for my business. And so let's let's break that down. Let's break it down. A single-page, what's that application? Here, I will show you an application that's defunct. It's called canistreamit.com. No, that IT. Can I stream it? And it's defunct right now because when Netflix, well, not just Netflix, but, but when streaming became a thing, Netflix had an API. And you could call the Netflix API and you could get a listing of all of their movies. And you could do the same thing with Amazon and Hulu and Kraken and all these guys. And then, so what they would do is they had all these plugged into their API. This is a single page application. This is what a web app looks like. If we, just, if we took this off the internet, and, and put it in a window it would be an application like any other application like that's number one we got to think of all this stuff is the same software is software it all does the same thing there's nothing really special about any two different pieces of, of programming language or anything the only difference is is the mechanisms the tools inside of the language make it easier to do certain things and the language works better in certain places because it was coded to work on that particular system so the reason why there's a lot of 
Linux involved in web development is because of Apache server. Apache server is runs most of the web servers on the planet. And so if you want to build a web page, you don't have to know Linux because you have to know Linux. You have to know Linux because that's where you're going to put your web page. But a lot of people don't know this. They go, I want to learn web development. And somebody says you got to learn Linux and they go, OK, and they start learning Linux and they, they don't even know why. And, and this has been a huge problem for people with Windows machines. They they go and they, they're looking for like how to learn web development and they see people using MacBooks or they go look for how to make videos and they see people with MacBooks and they think I have to have a MacBook. And they go and they get the MacBook and they still never make any videos. It's because they didn't know why they wanted the MacBook in the first. I want to make videos. Why do I want to make videos? Blah, blah, blah. So if we go here and we look at this, can I stream it? This is a single page application. And you would go up here, you would type a movie like let's type Hudson Hawk. And it's not gonna come up because this application doesn't work anymore. And it doesn't work because Netflix removed their their well not just Netflix, but a lot of these APIs aren't available anymore. Like you can't go in and get a listing of movies. But you would click this and it would go pull in all this information, it would display it on the screen and it would tell you if you could rent it stream it whatever it is you could do and then you could click a link and go to the site and if you didn't have an account you could sign up and so like if if you were looking for Hudson Hawk and it was and you wanted it and it showed up on Netflix but it was a uh, uh you could only stream it then you would click Netflix it would take you to Netflix and you would sign up for a Netflix account and then you would stream it and then this company would get a little bit of the money this is a single page application Google is the same way same thing right so let's go let's go to Google google.com and right so here's the thing <laughs> right sing multi multi page application single page web, web single page application is all the same stuff man it is all this. The only difference, the only difference is a single page application looks seamless. And that's because the whole page isn't being refreshed when you do something. And so like when we. So like, let's take YouTube, for instance. So we're going to do a control shift in to open or maybe a alt alt control shift. Here, we'll do this. We're going to go. We're going to click here. We're going to go open private window. So new private window. And then we'll go to YouTube. And so we got the two biggest search engines in the world. We got Google and we got YouTube. When we go to YouTube, let's click this video. This is the application. And so what happens, right, is like we can do stuff on here. Let's see. I'm trying to find something. So like let's say, for instance, how, how we're on here and we can we can click um, we can click the show more. And it'll show more stuff. In the old days, before before we were able to make what's called single page applications, the whole page would reload. Like if we wanted to show, like we wouldn't have a show more like this because when we click the button, you have to reload the whole page to show this stuff. A single page. A chance to send the home. So a single page application. In in. In the, in the sense that we talk about it, it's just the application where the whole page doesn't reload. Only the portion of content that we want to see gets loaded. Now, if we go over here, we go to Google. Google is not a single page application, but it's an application the exact same as, as YouTube in the show more button or the exact same as Twitter in your, in your timeline or the exact same as Instagram. They're all the same. They all do the same stuff. They all work the same way. There's an interface. The interface talks to a computer somewhere and then the computer does something and it returns back some sort of infer some sort of some sort of information. So if we know that, if we know that all we need is an interface and some logic, then we're one step away from not having to go to the boot camp. Now it's going to, okay, how do I make the interface? How do I make an interface for a web application? You start at HTML and CSS. That HTML is the is the layout of it. CSS is going to determine the style and the design. And you can see this. Like if you go over to YouTube, the real Casadero. I mean, it's not the real Casadero.com. YouTube.com forward slash the real Casadero. And you go. 
and you go and you find the video where I where where I recreate the supreme the supreme website right here uh code code like supreme in this video if you watch this video when I go through it first I do the html then I do the javascript and then I do I mean then I first I do the html then I do the css and that's the look in the field that's it this is an application. Now, if we wanted to add something else to this application to make it work like a YouTube or a Google or something like that, all we have to do is add input fields. The input fields take in information from a user, and then we send that information to our program. Our program processes it, and then it sends something back to the browser, and we put it on the screen. That's how, that's how the application works. And so we just add in another component, HTML for the structure, CSS for the way it's going to look, JavaScript for the logic, right? How do I take this information and send it somewhere else and get it back? And then, and so there you've got everything you need to make a program. And you can go out and you can learn Node. And and again, Node is nothing special, people. It's, it's, just, it's just a runtime environment for JavaScript. So if you were to learn C, you would need to have a compiler. The C compiler would compile your code. So you'd have to write your code on a computer. You have to run it through a compiler that's on the computer. Node is just an interpreter that reads your JavaScript code. In Node, you can install on a computer, which means that you can use it outside of the web browser. JavaScript was just for inside of your web browser. It was just for controlling stuff in the browser. So whatever happens in the browser stays in the browser unless you explicitly send that information back across the internet to a server or somewhere else on the internet. So a single page application, right? So now you got two ways to go. You can build this thing on just the client side where all it does is run in the browser, which means you have to use things like local storage in order to store information on the local machine. Like cause you, if somebody leaves and they come back, you don't want them to lose all their stuff. Um, but then like you're like okay well what if somebody clears their cache or they switch to another computer or they do one of a million other different things are they going to have to start from scratch or do i save their state the state of their application somewhere else so if they come back and they need all this information again they can just get it and that's where shopping carts come from shopping cart you go to a website put something in the cart leave don't come back for five years come back open up the cart it's still there that's because there is either some information stored on your computer inside of your web browser or some information stored on the server that says hey this is where you left off that is the application the only difference is is whether or not the information that your application is producing and is going to share with the user, are you going to be saving it? And if so, where are you going to save it? Are you going to save it on the Internet or are you going to save it on your local machine? A web page is just a file saved on the Internet so other people can get to it anytime. That's it. That's, and applications are the same thing. They're just pieces of data all over the place. So if you know all this stuff, now you should be able to go out and start building your thing. And people think like I should be able to just sit down at a computer and bang this out. And no, that's not how it works, team. You work on some stuff and then you run into a wall and then you go and you do a bunch of research. You're on Stack Overflow. You're all over the internet looking at all these different things. And then you find a piece of code that sort of makes sense. You try to wrap your head around it. You get your head wrapped around it and then you go and you implement it and you test it and it works. And then you've learned something new. And that's how the process goes. Only in tutorials does someone sit down and make a complete project from beginning to end. Unless it's a super, like a, if it's a, a really, really, really simple project, then yeah, and simple is a relative thing. Like the more websites you make, the simpler things become. And eventually you reach a level where a lot of the stuff that you thought was really complicated it's really, really, it, it feels really, really simple to you. It feels so simple that you can't understand why other people are unable to understand what it is you're talking about. And at the same time, there's other stuff that you haven't learned that you're listening to and you're hearing you hear other people talk about. You're going, dude, I'm stupid. I don't understand this stuff. It's because you're inside of it. It's like, 
it's like anything man it's like once once you once you get into it and you're doing it it does it doesn't it doesn't feel like what you expected it to be on the outside because you didn't really wrap your mind around what it was you were doing in the first place it's going to be boring it's going to be tedious it's going to be hard it's going to be difficult it's going to be what it's going to be and so right when it comes to going to school and going to boot camps, we got to be looking for, right, what am I going to learn? Why do I want to learn it? And then how is this going to put me in a position where I want to be, right? And maybe the boot camp is, is a pushing thing. Like, it'll push you to do that thing. But, but, but think, like, if you, if you have to be pushed just to learn to code, just to, if you have to, if you have to go spend thousands of dollars, just so someone can give you a curriculum and push you in the right direction to go learn this thing and like the incentive is is that if you don't learn it like you're going to lose all this money maybe it's something that you don't want to do in the first place because because it's unless you eat after you finish if you're pushed all the way through to the end you're at the end of it you're not going to know as much as the person who was like all about it and paid attention to it. And you're going to be competing with them for a job. And if you weren't into it, if you weren't into, if you, if you weren't like doing this because you have a goal to build something. And I mean, when I say like a goal to build something, not just like, it would be cool if I could build an app, right? But you got to build something like, and you got to start building this stuff. And it's like, like I learned early, I, I learned recently not to set my goal at building like a big app, just set my goal to build something every day and not build something every day from a tutorial, but build, just build something for me. Like whatever that is, like whether it be like writing a script uh, or, or making an image or, or editing a video, it has to be like something for me and and I have to and when I do it I've got to I've got to be thinking like I'm going to do this faster or I'm going to incorporate this new thing or so, there's got to be an aspect of me doing it that makes it better and you just do this over and over and over again and as time goes on you get the same result that you would get if you had have gone to a boot camp or something else the boot camp and the school and the whatever is just telling you like, hey, follow this process and you're going to develop this this knowledge over time. The difference is the difference between like the people who like really crush it and the people who don't or the people who like really crush it. Those are the people who they understand like, hey, this is I'm going to be pushed through this thing, but. But I'm going to. I'm going to try my best to stay ahead of it. So they're the, they're the people who are in the boot camp. They've paid the money and they're like, they're not doing the bare minimum. They're doing like, if there's one homework assignment, they're doing two. And if there's two homework assignments, they're doing three. And if they have to build something for class, they're going to build it for class. And then they're going to build it, build it and put it on the internet and maybe make it a little like, and they're thinking like, how can I take this stuff that I'm learning right now and apply it in the real world? Like, how can I take this skill and use it right away and practice it on a regular basis in order to get better at it? And eventually those people, like, they'll learn the foundation so well that they'll pass what the teacher is teaching. Like, it, it's, it's, and you know, th those are the people, like, we call them teacher's pet or whatever. Like, they become, like, the head of the class and this stuff and, the, and, and the, all the stuff we hear. That's why. It's because they've mapped it out. Like, they've got this place that they're going to and sometimes they can't even explain it like if you ask them why you work so hard or why you do this they can't tell you they're just like i don't know it's just i just do it like i don't i don't know why and it's because to them it makes absolute sense it, it is so simple that they can't even explain it they can't explain the fact that i just do it because it's what i'm supposed to be doing like, that's just what I'm supposed to be. Like, some people are just good at school because they're supposed to be good at school. And where they get jacked up is they leave, they try to leave school and go out into the world and they can't survive. So, like, you get, like, the people who get straight A's who go into the world and, like, you would think they would be the most successful person ever and they're not because 
it, it's it, because they're missing a part. So you get people, you get you get these people who are like super smart in school and they're missing this portion. And then you've got people who are like not smart in school, but they go to school. School pushes them all the way through. They get to the end and they really didn't care about the things they were learning because they were learning them for the wrong reason. And now they go off into a career and they're not successful there and they're not happy. And so and that's, this is where unhappy people come from. This is where unsuccessful people come from. People doing things that they didn't really think they, they, they haven't come to a conclusion as to why they want to do those things. And when you reach that conclusion, it's like, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I should just go do this thing that I plan to do in the first place, because going to school for, for, if you need money right now, if you need a job right now, like going to school for like spending 20 grand and going to a boot camp for two months, isn't going to get you a job right now. Like it's not going to happen. And after you spend the money on the boot camp, it's like, dude, like your mind, you've completely reprogrammed your mind right now because your mind is in this place where like, I got to go, I got to finish this boot camp before I can get a job. So you're not even thinking about getting a job while you're in the boot camp. Then you come out of the boot camp and you go to get a job. And when you're looking for this job, you're two months into the future and you've been studying the stuff that's in this boot camp. And maybe like, God forbid you do this for like four years especially in the IT industry, you'll go in learning, you know, one thing and come out and nobody will be using that anymore. Like technology has completely changed. So you go into this boot camp, you come out and what happens to most people is they're looking at these jobs and it's like, you got to know this, you got to know that, you got to put this together. And there's terms that they have like this vague familiarity with, but they don't really understand the terms. So like people are talking about continuous integration and delivery and continuous integration pipeline and de development operations and like all these terms that sound like super complicated, but they're the same stuff you did in class, but you can't even understand this, right? So when you look at these job things and it's like, I need three years of experience. I need somebody who knows C sharp and they know continuous integration and delivery. They know, and, and they know they, they understand uh, testing with, with this particular framework and they understand this with this over. They go, Oh man, dude, I don't know any of that stuff. And they go, Oh, the, the, the boot camp it wasn't worth it. I wasted my time. I wasted my money. Right. And then they just want to throw everything out the window. It's because you didn't know in the first place, right? So, like, if you're going to be in that situation then, then just put yourself in this situation now. Just start applying for jobs now. Apply, right? What do you want to do? I want to I want to develop web apps. Okay, I want to develop web apps. What do I need to know? I need to know HTML and CSS. Like, you start at the basics. What's the very basic thing you need to know? I need to know HTML and CSS. Okay, cool. Go out and apply for jobs, HTML, CSS, and then go and, and get a course or a book. Right? You don't need to go to a boot camp and then say, hey, look, right, every day at this time, I'm going to sit down at this time and I'm going to learn this thing and I'm learning this thing exactly because of this. And you just do that and you just do it over and over and over again. And, and as you learn, you build and you teach. Right. You learn you learn what an H1 does. Just build stuff with H1s. Think about H H1s use. Think about how these fit into the web page. Think about why the H1 is the way it is. Why does it exist? Google the H1. Read the history of the H1. Learn everything you can about. Don't spend forever. You just want to get an understanding so that you can explain to a five-year-old what an H1 is. And then you do it with the H2. And then you do it with the H3. And then you do it with the doc type. And then you do it with the... And you just keep going through this process. And... You keep applying for the jobs every time you learn something new, right? Every time you build a new web page, I built this web page using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You build two web pages that goes on your resume. I built two web pages with this, right? You built 10, you say I built 10, right? And then, or, or and maybe you can roll them all up into a little company. You can say I built these for so and so marketing incorporated. You have these websites on the internet that people can go see, and you will get an entry level HTML job. In a CSS, you'll get those jobs. Somebody will hire you. Somebody will hire you. You write enough HTML and you got enough proof. It doesn't matter if you have a degree. It doesn't matter if you've been to a boot camp. They'll hire you. Somebody can show up and say, I have a master's degree in computer science. And their resume can be right next to yours. And if your resume says, I built a thousand websites, if they're looking for somebody to build websites, they will hire the person that built the thousand websites. So you can just learn by doing. You don't have to. You can go to go to the boot camp if you think it's going to drive you and it's going to push you. But if you don't see yourself being motivated enough to do more than the minimum when you get into the boot camp, 
then don't do it, man. Just like with any course, like with like any course, like if you before you sign up for any kind of course or anything, you got to think like, am I going to like, why am I buying this thing? What is the goal? What am I going to get from this course? If you got to set out, I'm going to finish this thing. I'm going to do everything that there is to be done. And I'm going to understand everything here. And even if the course is a bad course, it could be the worst course in the world. But if you set out to understand everything that they're talking about and why they're doing the things that they're doing, like you ask the questions and you get the answers and you and you develop an understanding, an understanding well enough to teach somebody else, even if the course was terrible, you will have learned more than if some than somebody who went through a ten thousand dollar boot camp. Because you went about it a different way. They were waiting for someone to feed them information. You were looking into the information and going, what is in here that I can use? What is here that I can take out and and, and use in my life? What can I activate right now? Dig it, team. So that is it. It's your biggest fan, the real Casadero. I hope that was was helpful. There was a little bit of some some rambling going on in their team. But what I want to do, right? I'm on a new format. I'm on a new kick. And I remember when I was going to work, I was commuting every day. I was going two hours to work, two hours back. And I would listen to this podcast uh, called Entrepreneur on Fire. And so you guys could check that out. Entrepreneur on Fire with John Lee Dumas. It's a daily podcast where he interviews business leaders. And I listen to that podcast because I'm in the business, but I never really listen to anything else. Um, I mean, there's some other stuff that I listen to, but the podcast was only like once a, once a week. He was the only podcast that was every day. So what I want to do is here is bring you, uh, some feature linked content That's going to be helpful, inspiring, motivational, inspirational, get you dedicated, help you learn some more, help you become a better version of yourself. I want to deliver that every day. So while you're going to work, driving to work, driving from work, you've got something that you can look forward to. Um, and then you've got something that'll make you think you got something that'll put some different thoughts and ideas in your head, help you question life and help you become not man, not, not even like, not even a better coder or a better programmer. That's like a better person. Like, dude, it's not about code is a code is a tool. It's not about the code. It's fun to sit down. That's the thing. Like that's, that's what gets us high. We sit down and we type on the keyboard and it's super awesome to see like, this box do something after we gave it this command because it seems so unreal. It's like when you ask a person to do something, it's like, cool, they go do it. And you're like, thank you. But if you were to ask a tree to do something, if you were like, Hey tree, grab me a a Coke from the fridge and the tree like jumped up out the ground and walked to the fridge, you would feel like a boss. You would feel like a master, like, like bro, like I'm God over here. And like computers make us feel that way. And so we get caught up in this. I got to learn this new programming language because the new programming language is going to make you feel good when you write. Like if you do Hello World in JavaScript, you feel good. And then if you do Hello World in Perl, you feel good. And then if you do Hello World in C Sharp, you feel good. You feel good, but you ain't built nothing, man. You ain't built nothing. That's the thing. I want to motivate people to like build stuff, man, and to work together. That's what the Code 365 Startup Lab is about. I want to build it into a community where these like-minded people, people who want to learn to code for fun and profit, they want to get jobs, but they also want to build their own stuff, their own applications, their own websites, their own whatever it is, so it'll make them some money and they can have fun doing it in the process and they can show other people and they can have fun teaching people. It's all about having fun, team. Like, if you can't have fun, like, there's no need to do it. So that's what it's all about. So daily, I'm going to be dropping some long-form content like this. I want to keep it at around 60 minutes. I don't know how long this one is, but I figured I put myself on a schedule, do these every day, and then build something every day, and we can go out here and we can get it together, team. If you want to support me, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support those five kids I was talking about, and my little bitty dog, Chip, and the little lizard that we just got. We just got this. I don't even know what is called but we're going to be having some fun with him we're going to give him a website we're going to give him a webcam we're going to do all kinds of crazy stuff team but if you want to support this whole thing that's going on over here team check out the code 365 startup lab.com where you can get an introductory education to the world of web and software development until next time team this is your biggest fan the real 
Casadero. Uh oh, I'm back. I'm back. I meant to go over. I meant to go here. <coughs> no, this isn't the place. Here. 